it's Kay with the Airgun Podcast, and today we're just going to be taking a look at the 22 caliber Diana Storm Rider. So without going into too much detail of all the things I've changed and added to it and blah blah blah, basically we're just going to go over the functionality of the gun. Um, overall, it's a pretty short gun. Um, I think it's a, right around six pounds, a little more with a uh, scope and a bipod, but it's a good little gun to get started into PCPs. So the magazine right here, uh, it has a seven round magazine in 22 cal. Little magnet on the bottom holds it in place. I'll show you guys how the magazine works later in the video. As far as the specs goes, we have a pretty small air cylinder. So 100 cc cylinder, which means you're not gonna get a bunch of shots. The gun is not regulated, but you can add a regulator. So it just gives you more consistent shot string if you put a regulator in here, or you can increase the velocity if you want to as well. The weight of your projectiles is going to determine the energy that the gun is putting out, but shooting a, about a 15 or 16 grain pellet, you're going to be doing um, a little over 20 foot-pounds of energy. And uh, again, tons of pellets out there. My advice is try multiple different kinds to see which one your gun likes the best. I know that uh, Crossman pellets, the Crossman Premier hollow points, those shoot typically pretty well out of uh, a handful of guns, but the Diana Storm Rider, at least mine, does not like those pellets. What it shoots very well are the JSB 80s, uh, which I do the testing with, and then it also shoots the JSB 18 uh, grain pellets very well. Um, obviously that slows it down because one is like a 16 grain pellet and one is an 18 grain. Anyway, uh, not a bad little gun. Because the cylinder is so small, um, it's a lot lighter, it's a lot more maneuverable, it's very easy to shoulder, and this little scope on here is just perfect. Uh, what you have on the top is the 11 millimeter dovetail, and I added a Picatinny adapter up here. So, again, your gun is yours to do with what you want, and uh, you make it your own. You can have your own little quirks, your own little, you know, special things. I threw some decals on here, some stickers, just because, and then I had a friend machine an adapter so that I can fit a moderator on here, like a Donnie FL. And um, the muzzle brake on it originally, at least for the Gen 1, sucks. I actually have the Generation 2 bolt, uh, bolt handle and bolt probe. Uh, they're a little bit beefed up, a little bit more ergonomic and easier to work with than the Gen 1 bolt that ended up breaking on me. Uh, but this gun is coming in at under $200. Now, shipping and handling and all that stuff, it's obviously going to be just a little bit more. So, a $200 gun, you can get a hand pump for like $120, a high-pressure hand pump. You cannot use an air compressor, which in my early days, where very first learning about PCPs, I tried an air compressor just to see if it would work. Didn't work. Had to buy a hand pump. So, take it from me. Buy your fill source, like a hand pump or a, a scoop of tank, or if you've got an extra thousand to blow grab a compressor. But anyway, good little gun. There are some quirks, there are some things that you're going to learn on this gun that you like, that you don't like. So hopefully this review, uh, which isn't super in-depth, is just going to demonstrate what this gun is capable of doing. And uh, of course we have part two of the reviews, which is going to be taking the gun out into the field and seeing how it performs in the field, meaning doing pest control or if the season is right, uh, we can do some small game hunting and that kind of thing. So. Let's see how this bad boy does, and uh, we'll get cranking, and I'll tell you my final thoughts. All right, people, just to show you how this works, we've got our magazine here, and what you do is you take this and you rotate it all the way around, so you're holding spring tension, flip her over, put the first pellet in, skirt first, and that's going to hold the tension. And then you bring the slide over, drop the other pellets in. But this is pretty typical magazine loading protocol. So you've got to pull the bolt back. The magazine loads in from the left side. This little magnet on the bottom holds everything in place so it goes into the same spot each time.
Okay guys, this is my little brother again. He just woke up for a second time today. Still as good looking as before. This is the scope camera mount that I have set up. I built this for literally like less than 25 bucks. So all you need is your phone, obviously, as the recording device. And then I have some PVC in here, basically a rubber hose connector with some clamps on them. And then this goes like this. Phone goes in here, or whatever way you want to set it up, whatever way you're gonna be looking. This goes on to the end, like this. Phone is in there. And then, magical things, you see through the scope camera. Um, and the reason for that is this scope is so small that I can't put my normal side shot scope mount on there because it requires enough space to attach another um, scope ring, basically. So this does not have that, so I had to come up with my own way of addressing that issue. So this is what you're gonna be seeing the scope camera footage through, and it's not gonna be the best, so just a warning. 20 yards here, just going for groups, and those are the neighbor's dogs. Ooh, a flyer. So these groups were shot using the 22 caliber JSB Hades, and these are the 15.89 grain um, pellets. So with my regulator set and this weight of pellet, I'm getting about 890 feet per second, and um, that's uh, plenty of energy, honestly, and these are the hunting pellets. Like I said, get pretty good accuracy with these, as you'll see with the groups. Of course, your gun may be liking a particular pellet better than this one. This is just the one that my gun likes pretty well. So I am attached to the scope cam for the Diana Storm Rider, and unfortunately the footage that I used to capture some groups with this phone, an iPhone, uh, files are corrupt they won't work. Yeah. So what we're going to do is put this at 50 yards. I set the background as a squirrel. And uh, we are going to try and land an entire magazine on this squirrel. So seven shots with the JSB Hades at 50 yards with this little uh, 22 cal Diana Storm Rider and see if we can't get all seven shots on target. 50 yards here with the Diana Storm Rider 22 JSB Hades. Honestly, it's zeroed for 20, so we'll see where this first one goes. a little bit left walk into where the phone is. Like I said, I wasn't sure where the pellets were hitting because I zeroed at 20 and this is at 50. Also, that's only a three to nine scope, so I only get nine times magnification. So let's see what we did. Oh yeah. We did just fine. We hit that squirrel right in the face. Well, this is how I feel about Apple. But if you have some extra Utah air gun stickers, you can throw them on the back. But here's what I did to the old. That's several shots right there in this group, at least two or three. Looks like there's a pellet 
still underneath in there. Something. Anyway, it'll put it on target at 50 yards. You guys, changing it up a little bit. Found some Apollo 18 grain pellets. And we're just going to try and do this iPhone in. We're at 15 yards here. All right, we're going to go right for the camera lens. Looks like it's shooting about one of way to the left. Honestly, not an accuracy test, and that was a different pellet that I hadn't zeroed in. So, just getting a look at what it did. So, shooting it from the backside, and that's it, it's done.